The mesh tool in ARCHICAD is the tool that we use to create sites and abstract shapes. If we left mouse click to select that, once again the info box fills in with all the parameters for this particular mesh we're about to create. But I'm going to open the default settings dialog box and over here is a normal palette with, first of all, the depth of our mesh. Now the depth of our mesh is from the bottom to the first node or a zero height that it starts at. And story zero, zero again. We have three options over here. We can create a skin. We can create a skin with a skirt. Or we can create a solid body mesh. We can also show that mesh on different stories. On the current story, one story up, down, all stories, and also custom. And of course, if you click on custom there, the custom palette comes on. At the moment, we're going to place this on a site modeling layer. That's a layer that we're actually going to put our mesh on. If I expand the floor plan and section attributes, once again here we have what our mesh will look like if we cut through it. That's the fill that we're going to use. Then the pens, it's all going to be used for this cut. Ridge will be green or pen number 58. The outlines in the floor plan will be pen number one, It'll be a solid line, and if I wanted to use a cover fill, I select that and expand it, and we can see here at the moment it's an empty cover fill, and there's a number of other options there which I'm just going to collapse because I'm not going to use it. And then once we're happy with that, I can collapse that once again in the model. We have materials. We can have all ridges sharp, user defined, or all ridges smooth. It's set by default to all ridges smooth because most sites have a fairly smooth undulating surface. And then once we're happy with that, we also have the listing label which is taken care of in another movie on this DVD. So once I push OK, I can start modeling the site. We have a number of different methods of constructing there. First of all, the polygon method in which we can draw any shape we like just by left mouse clicking on different nodes if I go control Z we can also draw a straight rectangle rotated rectangle where we define the angle first left mouse click again then drag out if you were going to do that you'd probably rotate the grid as well if you needed to and just quickly if you wanted to do that you could just view Grid options, set skewed grid, left mouse click on the first node, second node, and then that way our X and Y coordinates are matching our rotated rectangle. I'm just going to undo that again by clicking on orthogonal grid and get rid of that slab. And then we also have this final construction method which shows this regular sloped construction method and if I draw a site with that it asks us to divide the site into divisions and we define the first corner elevation by clicking let's just say three meters the second corner can be one meter and then this top left hand corner I'm going to put at, leave at zero actually, push OK. Then if I push F4 on the Mac or F5 on a PC, we can see by giving it some, by giving it a meter depth, we can see our gradual surface that we've created. And if I wanted to change any of those Heights, I can merely, while I'm on the mesh tool, left mouse click on that and I can, my pet palette, click the Z height and I can drag that height to anything I like. I can type in a distance if I like. So if I push Control Z, Control Z and back to the floor plan, I'm just going to delete that. Now I'm just going to model a site that's probably 
a bit more conventional. Now I've just drawn a mesh. You can see that we've got a metre depth and it's just a flat side at the moment. So if I go back to the floor plan and most of the time we'll get sites with contours on them or we have access to contours from some surveyors. So I'm just going to draw a couple of 2D lines over the site to simulate some contours and then if I select the mesh and I'm on the mesh tool if I hold my spacebar down and I left mouse click with the spacebar held down we can add new nodes or trace this contour and if I click again I'm going to do the same again same again same again and so I'm just holding down the shift key and left mouse clicking on each of these contours now if I deselect everything and go to the 3D window by pushing F4 on the Mac and F5 on the PC to get to my 3D window we can see the contours there but I haven't changed anything yet so now I'm going back to the 3D window selecting the mesh it's important that the mesh is selected then as my mouse hovers over one of these nodes left mouse click and type in the height I might type a meter here and then it's important to press apply all that will give after pressing OK that will make this whole contour at one meter just to make this clearer I'm going to access the floor plan section controls from there and select ridge selection show user defined and we can't see the drop down there so I'm going to use this palette anyway over here outlines in floor plan I want to show all ridges and by pressing show all ridges it shows the triangulation of that contour that I just created so now I'm going to keep moving on here so I might make this two meters apply to all this is still at zero and this is still at zero so I might take just the corner up to one meter and I'm not going to press apply all because that will take all the outside boundary that's connected up to a meter so I'm just going to make that a meter we can see that our site is taking form when editing the mesh we also have a number of options and I'm going to illustrate these by cutting holes all the time so our first option is no surface fitting which means that should make everything go down to zero so now we've got a zero level there as well next is fit to user ridges and when we use this method new points will be placed on the current surface mesh and only the user defined ridges will keep their height this method is recommended mostly for renderings then finally create a hole again fit all ridges if I push OK there with fit all ridges it adds new points and they'll be placed on the current surface of the mesh and all ridges will keep their height this method is the most accurate one but will generate the largest number of ridges. So now when I push F4 on a Mac or F5 on a PC we go to the 3D window and we can see the result of these three different methods. If, you, if we want to add more points or new nodes to the mesh make sure you're on the mesh tool, make sure the mesh is selected and make sure you're on the polygon tool and then we can just draw anywhere we like add new points and I can change the height of them here if I like apply to all once again so now we're at five meters we can see that the new points are just placed there if I select the mesh here I can also move them up and down in the 3d window 
The differences between Orids is sharp. We can see the effect just makes everything as as the title suggests. All ridges are sharp. User defined sharp. And then the smoothest or ridges smooth. We can use the mesh tool to create all sorts of objects other than just sites. Over here we have an example of three meshes. The main structure, this little mesh here and underneath. This mesh is as we can see it's a bit of a canopy as well as a ornate object. This was kindly donated to us by Nth Degree Architects here in Melbourne and we can see how he's done some we can see how he's modelled this strange structure there and also he's modelled a site we can see that's also a mesh and quite innovatively as well he's used a roof tool to make the driveways so it's a good example of how you can use ArchiCAD elements not necessarily just for what they seem like at face value so if I just close that here we see the mesh on the floor plan and if I go to the photo render view Here we can see the fantastic effect that he's created. And finally if I go to his layout, here we can see the shape of it in elevation and from the front as well.